Well, my name is Zrania Tfaili. Uh, I'm the partner of Hassan Diab, who has been extradited to France in November of 2004. Um, I would like to share with you, you know, what happened and how unjust uh, this case has been. Uh, our life was normal, like any other uh, couple in, in, uh, in Ottawa or in Canada until 2007 when a journalist flew from France uh, to meet Hassan and to tell him that he's under investigation by French authorities for an attack that happened against a synagogue in 1980. Uh, Hassan told him that he's, he's innocent, he had nothing to do with this and we continue to live our lives uh, as usual. Uh, however, we were uh, followed all the time by uh, uh, people in black cars who were harassing us. They even tried to break into our home. So this continued for 13 months until Hassan's arrest in November 2008. Uh, he was detained for a number of months and then he was released on strict bail conditions. That included that we have to pay about $2,000 per month for electronic monitoring, as well as to post uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars as bond and to have many sureties. Um, and then we started to know what the allegations are ba against him are based on. So it turned out that in 1999, the French authorities just got it that you know a, a note saying that somebody with the name Hassan Diab could have committed this attack. Uh, until now, we still don't know anything further than this, except that this is a note that they got. Uh, and they started, you know, investigating this case. And um, they interviewed many people. Uh, and they all said uh, that, you know, Hassan is, is a good person. You know, he's, he's not anti-Semite. He's against racism. He's against terrorism. Uh, he's a peaceful and loving person. Um, one of the evidence that they wanted to use against Hassan is a handwriting analysis because the suspect in 1980 filled a hotel card with five words in block letters. So the French investigators tried to match documents that they thought were written by Hassan when he was a student at Syracuse University to these to this uh, hotel card, and they had uh, two uh, analysts from France who did the comparison, and they claimed that, you know, there is a match between Hassan's handwriting and that of the suspect. Uh, I mean, it turned out not that this is absolutely not true, but many of the documents that they matched to the suspect were not written by Hassan, they were written by his ex-wife. So they were not even using Hassan's handwriting to come up with this ridiculous conclusion. Uh, when the defense showed this in court, uh, the Crown attorneys here in Canada, they requested a lengthy adjournment. Uh, and after several months in which we continued to pay for the electronic monitoring and to be subjected for, uh, to all of these strict bail conditions, France decided to withdraw the evidence, the handwriting analysis, uh, in Canada and to file a new handwriting analysis, again based on the five words in block letters. We had uh, five experts from uh, Canada, from the US, from the UK, from Switzerland, all testifying in court that uh, the handwriting analysis does not match that of uh, uh, of, of Hassan and that uh, whatever the French analyst did was not based on a correct methodology, it was deeply flawed, it was biased, she predetermined Hassan's guilt and uh, an objective analysis would have excluded him from being the suspect. Despite all of these testimonies and even though the extradition judge himself found that the evidence against Hassan is very problematic, uh, very confusing, convoluted, suspect, illogical. He said he has no choice but to order Hassan's extradition. Uh, we tried to appeal to the Court of Appeal in Ontario and to the Supreme Court, but uh, we were not successful. So Hassan was extradited to France. He's now in jail there. Uh, he's alone, you know, deprived from access to family, to loved ones. Uh, we had problem even getting in contact with him by phone for several months. 
despite repeated attempts uh, to, to have this problem uh, resolved, uh, he is subjected to uh, sleep deprivation in which every, uh, at every hour of the night, a light is turned on uh, in his cell and then off. So the guards are, you know, quote and quote, checking on him. But this causes him to wake, re wake up repeatedly and he can't go back to sleep. And he wrote to the, to the, to the judge, he wrote to the, to the jail, but still to no, uh, to no avail. Um, recently, you know, we are, he applied for bail, but he was denied. And surprisingly, they are still relying on the two handwriting reports that are now known by almost everyone that they included many documents that were not even written by Hassan. And there was absolutely no mention of this. They are still putting them forward as reliable evidence that, you know, he's guilty, even though they know that many experts testified that he would have been excluded uh, from being the suspect if an objective handwriting analysis were conducted. Uh, so we are trying to publicize this case. We are trying to raise awareness in the hope that, you know, he, we, and people who support him and who want, you know, this case resolved in a fair way, uh, get justice. Very nice. Okay. Now, mm -hmm. I heard that you uh, were talking with him today. Is there anything you'd like to share from that? Uh, no, I mean, we were so happy that, you know, uh, after several months, uh, it, it finally, you know, he is able to talk to us, and hopefully this continues. Uh, uh, we uh, we plan to see him in about uh, 17 days, so we are very excited. I'm sure he he's, he won't be able to sleep because uh, he hasn't seen us for a number of months. He hasn't seen Jenna since she was two in November, and of course he hasn't seen the new baby. So. Uh, Thank you, Ramya. Okay, thank you.